So, SAO continued to impress with the second episode of Season 3, with its focus on world building, or at least or at least setting up the basics for the world that seems to be the primary setting for the season, though it does leave me with a lot more questions than answers. In this episode, we have Kirito wake up, back in the virtual world of Episode 1, though with no memories of this world, but instead those from Earth. And then, before long, he runs into Uejo. He spends most of the episode just trying to figure out what's going on, figure out a way to get back to Earth. The show starts explaining a bit more about the world, such as the way everyone follows the Taboo Index, how everyone has a calling, and a bit about the role of the church. This episode did feel kind of slow, like there wasn't all that much happening, but I think this was a good thing. We're enveloped in the mystery, just like Kirito, and by taking this time, the show is letting all these feelings sit in of not knowing what's going on. And the season's going to be 50 episodes, so there's just no reason to rush. I am curious about seeing the reason behind all this. Like, last episode, Kirito is stabbed with a poison, which should kill him at least. So how did that lead to him waking up here? Did they take him to the wrath, hook him up? If so, why? That makes no sense as to if someone was stabbed, you take them to a hospital, not to a video game machine. So, or did he die or is nearly dying and so his consciousness is transmitted to the soul that is part of the wrath still? Again, that might not make any sense, but hey, I'm throwing ideas out there. We'll see what happens. And then there's just a lot about the world we don't know. While the episodes seem to focus on establishing it, we only saw what we needed to, which... That's how you should tell a story, but it makes me want to know more. I do wonder how much I can care because this is a virtual world and therefore not real. But then again, you could say that the whole show is a fictional world, so why should I care about that? So, we'll see how that goes. I also question why Kirito still has his sword skills, since I'm afraid that's just an excuse to make him OP. And yeah, that's one of the major complaints about pretty much all of SAO is Kirito being so overpowered. But we'll see where it goes. I like everything else, so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. And then the other question is, who are these other people? Kirito has basically said that they cannot be NPCs, nor can it be other players because of how many of them there are. So what else does that leave? He hypothesizes that they're artificial souls, which that raises even more questions. I also question what's going on with that naked blue haired chick at the end of the episode. Like, why is she there? Why is she naked? What is the reason for that? But yeah, that was... A way to end an episode, I guess. Something else I want to bring up, though, is how cliché this all is, though. I'm not saying this in a bad way, just uh, stick with me. This season has followed a lot of tropes of the standard isekai setup. You have a main character suddenly killed, stabbed by something, and he wakes up in a fantasy world, confused as to what's going on, and is just trying to figure out what happened and how to get back. I could be talking about any number of shows with that last statement. Now, this isn't cliché in a bad way. But it's interesting how SAO is following all these cliches and doing it well, but still. I remember reading how the author wanted to basically redo his first arc in this arc now that he had learned. So I guess it makes sense that they are going back to the Isekai roots. In a way, I'm a little bit disappointed because season two really highlighted how they can do something interesting with the science fiction elements. But we'll see. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of sci-fi stuff here. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Overall, though, uh, another solid episode. I can't say it's my favorite of the season because Zombieland Saga exists, which, by the way, go check that one out. It is amazing. But as I finished this episode of SAO, I just wanted more. Like, I felt like the episode shouldn't be over yet because I need more. But I have to wait till next week, sadly. Yep, I guess I'm turning into an SAO fanboy. I feel like I need to go, just go watch something from Yuasa to, like, balance that out. Anyway, see you all next time.